down and how I practice this for auditions and how I practice it for this tape. Um, so I usually split this excerpt, both of these excerpts can kind of stand alone uh, with what they bring to an audition, but uh, we'll just start with this first one for now. The melody, this is the first time that we've been given the melody in this symphony. This is in uh, the development in the first movement. and. We were playing this along with the cellos and the bassoons. Um, so this is, this is pretty important. You see forte, but um, we'll try to bring a little bit of phrasing and context to it overall. Is that we have the theme, and then we have this eighth note section, and then we have the theme, but dominant. Um, and then we have this eighth note section to the end. Um, so, the way that I practice this theme is that I try to bring some of the mysterioso, kind of some of the grace that it's initially presented to us in the symphony, and um, I try to put it in the, in the character of Forte, not so much the dynamic of Forte, but the character of Forte. Um, and then I try to shape it according to my own sensibilities. But it sounds something like this. This is, it's important, when you see this music, you see forte, and you're just like, okay, let's just. But what we want to do is that we want to create an upbeat and a downbeat, and this is going to be. And then I'm going to phrase each beat louder, right? So, louder, loudest, okay. Um, and you don't want it to be too duple jilt, like, um, segmented, so it's one idea. Okay, and the, the G is just in the air, you just throw it away. It's not, it's not that, it's, it's one idea. Um, and then this is this, this section in which we, are, we go into the eighth notes, right? So, this is the same idea, you have these up, upbeats. Now the eighth note section. Right. Um, so what I do is I work on the theme individually. I, I make sure that this is... You can see the fingering I'm doing here. Okay. Um, so I work on that and then I go back into this eighth note section. This eighth note section is, is challenging because of the stroke that's required for it. Um, you have to be completely relaxed. The, the stroke doesn't come from a manual, you don't want to bounce it, which whatever bow you play, you don't want to bounce this uh, or try to bounce it. But what you want to do is you want to walk this line between the slack and the actual bass strings and then the natural bounce the stick provides with this curve right here. So what's going to be helpful is that if you relax in, you find the natural slack and you just find the stroke that you want and you might want to change it. the contact point down here. That might be a little bit higher, that might be a little bit lower, depending on your instrument. Um, and you want to find the stroke. You want to be relaxed in this arm. You want to make sure that it's coming from the core, not from your, your wrist. And then how I practice this is that I break this into these eighth note sections. Uh, into what I think is each section. So at this, uh, going into the second system, I think this is one idea, I think. That's one idea. I practice this and I, and I get into it a little bit. So. And so here's the next idea. It's this uh, arpeggiated section. So it's... That's 
one idea. Um, this is really challenging, and this is, I, I'm using this fingering, but uh, do whatever your teacher recommends or whichever feels most comfortable um, to you. But to move fast like this, because you want it to be, because it's a harmonic idea, this could be like that. You really want to make sure that this note, because this is the harmony, is right? But we're going to flush out the harmony, so it's that's the idea. You want to stay relaxed in this arm. To get down there so fast is uh, if you practice your scales every day, you uh, can just let your arm drop. Just let gravity take it and just Not, you don't try to jump and jam the hand, you try to just drop into the shift. Your hand knows where it needs to go, you just drop into the shift. And you do the same the next time. Um, so this is the next idea, right? So it's The next eighth note idea, I think, so it's one idea all the way to this end um, phrase, and you can just kind of you go to the B flat, and then you just flesh out the harmony with a G, just like just like we had. Just flesh it out, and then then you have the the theme again, and then the eighth notes again, which is the same idea. The the theme is is louder, this louder, loudest, and then up beat down beat. Section. Um, find that natural slap again, but this is going to be a little bit lower. So find that stroke that you like. And so here's the uh, arpeggiated version again. So I think that the first eighth note section is, and then it's. That's the next section, uh, section, and then you have this long build. This is much longer. And you're going to be changing register, um, so you have to find a bow stroke that's going to work for, or you can change it easily as you move through this next eighth note section. So you find a natural slack, and you let this string do the work, right? This string is going to you give it natural weight in the right arm, and it's going to. Play for play it for you. Um, but then, as you get into this, we have to be relaxed because we get into this next section. So we can't maintain the same bow stroke that we had down here as we have up here. So we're going to have to lengthen it a little bit to make sure that those strokes sound the same. Because uh, this is going to be much naturally, those notes are going to be uh, much naturally shorter than those. So we want to lengthen the bow stroke as we get higher. Uh, that's not not super good uh, way to convey it, but so that's kind of the idea. And then we're going to have to you just relax into a little bit of a uh, broader stroke. And then go. Uh, we finish on to that A at the end of the excerpt. Um, so to play this excerpt, I would think to myself, uh, I would put myself in the at the very beginning of the symphony, and I would think the violins and the violas, uh, the violins and the second violins rather, playing. And I would think, and I'd try to make it, um, I'd try to make it uh, similar, but a little bit louder, right? Okay. So this is how I would start the excerpt. I think in my head, and I take that tempo, and then I think eighth notes. All right. So I'm going to play the excerpt for you for the final time.
So I hope that explains a little bit about my process and uh, good luck on this one. We'll move on to the next one.